Last month, Architects Journal revealed that Foster Plus Partners is planning a massive project in Saudi Arabia, a skyscraper stretching two kilometers into the sky. If they pull it off, this giant would not only tower over the 828-meter Burj Khalifa, but also double the height of Saudi Arabia's previous record attempt, the Jeddah Tower. This monumental building is set to rise in the capital city of Jeddah. This announcement raises a big question. Is it really possible to build a skyscraper so tall? And if so, how would engineers and architects go about it? We're committed to releasing two videos every week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds. Let's take a creative approach to understanding the sheer magnitude of a two kilometer tall skyscraper. Picture Manhattan with its dense layout and towering buildings. Right in the center of it lies Central Park, a lush green oasis stretching about four kilometers long. Now, imagine slicing this iconic park in half, then standing that half upright. What you'd have would then resemble the staggering height of a two kilometer skyscraper. So tall, it would loom high above every other structure in New York's famous skyline. But there's more to think about than just height. Let's talk about the footprint of such a gigantic building. Consider 432 Park Avenue, a standout in the city for its sleek, slender design. This skyscraper has a width-to-height ratio of 1 in 15, making it one of the thinnest in the world. Even so, applying this ratio to a building that stretches 2 kilometers into the sky means the base would have to be enormous. In fact, it'd be so large that it wouldn't even fit on a typical New York City block, which measures about 80 by 274 meters. That puts it into perspective just how massive and frankly unrealistic such a skyscraper would be. It's fascinating to think about these architectural what-ifs, isn't it? When contemplating the design of an extraordinary skyscraper, especially one that towers to a dizzying two kilometers, it's crucial to start with its core. This isn't just the physical backbone that holds everything together from structural steel to electrical systems. It's also home to a vital yet often underestimated component, lift shafts. The core of a skyscraper is essentially its command center, housing critical systems like plumbing and electrical conduits alongside the all-important lift shafts. With a building reaching 2 kilometers, translating to approximately 500 stories, the challenge of moving people efficiently becomes a central concern. Imagine this building at full capacity, bustling with around 100,000 people, equivalent to a small city. The sheer volume of individuals needing to move in and out between these floors is staggering. In a typical skyscraper, lift systems are designed to maximize space while providing efficient transport. However, as the number of lifts increase, the usable space within the building diminishes. This is a significant design challenge as every square meter taken up by lift shafts is space not available for offices, residences, or amenities. The very purposes for which the skyscraper is built. One common solution to manage the vertical commute in such tall buildings is the introduction of sky lobbies. These intermediary stopping points serve as transfer hubs where people switch from express lifts that shoot straight up from the ground level to local lifts that ferry them to specific floors. This system not only speeds up travel time, but also optimizes the use of lift shafts, allowing for a more spacious and functional design within the living and working areas. However, in the case of a two kilometer skyscraper, traditional sky lobbies might not suffice due to the extreme number of floors. Therefore, more innovative solutions are necessary to enhance efficiency and capacity. Enter the concept of double-decker lifts. This ingenious design stacks two lift cars, one above the other in the same shaft. The arrangement is straightforward yet effective. Passengers heading to even-numbered floors board the lower car, while those going to odd-numbered floors use the upper one. This setup essentially doubles the capacity of each lift shaft, allowing more people to move quickly throughout the building. Double-decker lifts not only maximize the efficiency of vertical transportation, but also dramatically reduce the wait time and congestion during peak hours. Such a system can be a game-changer in the functionality of a skyscraper as colossal as the one we're envisioning. Plus, these lifts can be enhanced with smart technology. Imagine a system where passengers enter their destination floor on a touchscreen panel before boarding. The lift algorithm then calculates the most efficient route, possibly even grouping passengers by destination to reduce the number of stops. This could further streamline the flow of people and improve the overall efficiency of the building's transportation system. However, implementing such advanced lift systems in a super tall skyscraper is not without challenges. The cost of installing and maintaining such high-tech lifts is significant, and the structural implications of housing multiple double-decker lift shafts needs to be meticulously planned. The engineering behind ensuring these lifts can safely and swiftly move hundreds of people at a time up and down a building that stretches two kilometers in the sky is not a small feat. 
Okay, so that's one way of getting people up and down the core. But what could a 2-kilometer core actually look like? They must ensure the structure is not only functional, but also resilient against natural elements like wind and seismic activities. One innovative design that has proven effective for super tall buildings is the propeller-shaped or three-pronged star floor plan. This architectural approach isn't just a stylistic choice, it's a strategic one, rooted deeply in the principles of engineering and physics. This design was first popularized by the CN Tower in Toronto, which opened back in 1976. The tower's core, shaped like a propeller, offers exceptional stability and wind resistance, making it a pioneering structure in its time. The primary advantage of this design is how it distributes the building's mass, helping it to withstand tall winds and other lateral loads. This is critical in very tall structures where wind forces can significantly impact the building's integrity and the comfort of their occupants. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai and the Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia, two of the tallest buildings in the world, have adopted this propeller-shaped design. Both exceed 800 meters, with the Jeddah Tower projected to nearly reach a kilometer upon completion. Their cores spread out in a Y-shaped configuration, which not only aids in stabilizing the structure, but also helps in breaking up wind vortices, essentially reducing the sway that occupants might feel on higher floors. However, this design comes with its trade-offs, primarily concerning the internal space of the building. The extensive buttressing required to support such a core limits the amount of usable, occupiable space within the skyscraper. This wasn't much of an issue for the CN Tower, whose main occupied areas are concentrated at the top, primarily for observation and communication purchases. But for multi-purpose skyscrapers like the Burj Khalifa, which includes hotels, residential spaces, and offices, this limitation is a significant consideration. Despite these constraints, the propeller-shaped core remains a preferred choice for ultra-high skyscrapers. With current technology and materials, it offers the best balance between height and stability. Engineers continue to refine this design, optimizing the use of materials and space to push the boundaries of how tall buildings can go. For a skyscraper reaching 2 kilometers, such innovations in core design will not only be necessary, but will define the very feasibility of the structure. As skyscrapers push the boundaries of height, they become increasingly vulnerable to the forces of nature, particularly wind. This susceptibility is akin to the effect of applying force to the top of a small Lego tower. While pushing at the base might not move it, a push at the top can easily cause it to topple. This analogy helps illustrate the challenges engineers face when designing super tall buildings, where the higher they go, the more they must consider how wind will impact the structure. Over the years, ingenious solutions have been developed to mitigate the effects of wind on these towering structures. For instance, Taipei 101, which was the world's tallest building from 2004 to 2010, employs a tuned mass damper, or TMD. This device consists of a massive 660-ton ball suspended between the 92nd and 88th floors. In windy conditions, the TMD swings, absorbing the energy transferred to the building by the wind, thereby stabilizing it and reducing sway that could lead to discomfort or structural issues. This ingenious solution acts like a giant pendulum, working against the movements of the building to keep it steady. Another architectural marvel, the Shanghai Tower, which stretches up to 632 meters, utilizes a twisted exterior design. Not only does this provide a visually striking aesthetic, but it also plays a critical role in wind mitigation. The twist in its structure helps to deflect wind along the entire length of the tower, distributing the forces more evenly and reducing the wind's impact as it climbs higher. These strategies highlight the creativity and engineering prowess that goes into designing skyscrapers capable of withstanding nature's challenges. However, as we consider pushing the envelope further with a proposed 2-kilometer tall skyscraper, we must ask ourselves several questions. Will the current technologies be sufficient to counteract the amplified effects of wind at such extreme heights? Can these methods be scaled effectively, or will entirely new innovations be necessary? One might wonder if it's even feasible to employ a tuned mass damper of the size that would be required for such a height. How large would it need to be, and what would be the implications for the building's overall design and functionality? Similarly, could the twisting design employed by the Shanghai Tower be adapted to a much taller structure without compromising on space and other architectural elements? Moreover, while these solutions have proven effective for buildings up to 600 meters, a 2-kilometer skyscraper would introduce a whole new set of challenges. The forces acting on such a structure would be unprecedented, and the engineering solutions would need to be proportionally more robust. In exploring these possibilities, it's essential to engage in a dialogue about the limits of current architectural and engineering practices. What new materials or technologies might need to be developed to ensure the feasibility of such a project? 
How would the increased use of resources such as steel and concrete impact the project's environmental footprint? And importantly, how can the safety of these monumental structures be guaranteed in the face of unpredictable weather patterns and natural disasters? History shows us that architectural ambitions often stretch the limits of contemporary technology and drive innovation. From the Eiffel Tower to the Burj Khalifa, each leap in skyscraper height has brought new challenges and spurred advancements in building technology. As we discuss the prospect of a two-kilometer skyscraper, we continue this tradition of pushing the boundaries of what's architecturally possible. Engaging with these challenges not only prepares us for the specific project at hand, but also enriches our overall understanding of structural engineering and architecture. It forces us to think critically about the balance between aspiring to build higher and the practical implications of such ambitions. As we've seen with other ambitious projects, from mountains hollowed out for scientific endeavors to giant cinematic spheres, the boundary between the fantastical and the feasible is constantly evolving. While the idea of a two-kilometer skyscraper might seem daunting, the journey towards such a feat could unlock new doors in architectural design and engineering. The key question remains, are we ready to take the leap? And if so, how will we ensure the journey is both successful and sustainable? We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.